Listen, if you've seen any of the videos on my channel, you already know I am not a fan of Ubisoft anymore. And if you didn't know that, well, you know now. I'm not going to pretend that the games that Ubisoft has released in the past 7 or 8 years are terrible, because they're not terrible at all. They're mediocre. They're lazy. They're uninspired. And I'd say at least half of them are the very definition of a bad sequel. That being said, in a vacuum, some of these games are good. Not amazing, certainly not masterpieces, but some are at least good and they used to be great. Earlier this year, I reviewed Far Cry 2, which I called the best Far Cry game. Now, if you're a modern Ubisoft fan, I would bet you haven't played the game because nobody really cared about Far Cry before 3. But Far Cry 2 was an awesome game that had a lot of experimental mechanics that put off people. But despite that, it had a lot of fun ideas, had some great shooting mechanics, a cool progression system, and it doesn't have any of the repetitive crap that's in modern Ubisoft games. So you should give it a chance, or at least maybe check out that video if you think you might be interested. But unfortunately, even though Far Cry 3 was an awesome game that did something completely different and really evolved the formula and made a lot of great changes, it also started the downfall of this series. Because Ubisoft couldn't help themselves, they had a real success on their hands, and so they copy-pasted it into oblivion. Well, honestly, this review kind of got out of control. I was thinking when I made this, oh, it'll be 20 minutes, I'll cover all the important things, and it'll be just like my usual reviews. Well, this ended up being a pretty deep analysis into its mechanics, so let me know if you want to see more videos like this. I'll try not to bore you. So, at the end of the day, is the game worth getting at $60? Well, uh, you read the title, but is it worth getting at a discount, or is it worth renting a month of Ubisoft Plus for? Well, stick around and find out. Before we get into this, do the things the algorithm likes. It really helps the channel. Liking and commenting, or disliking and leaving a hateful comment doesn't really make a difference to me. Thank you. And without further ado... Okay, this game doesn't deserve a clever intro. Let's just get into this. That parachute I gave you could come in handy here. <laughs> just don't drop into the I'm casually shooting this guy and he's like, hmm? What? What's happening? If you tuned into my stream, you already know how I feel about this game. And despite a pretty mediocre first impression. I ended up putting in over 30 hours into this game just for this review to try and be as thorough as possible. Because this is a multifaceted game, definitely. There's a lot of things to like here, but there's far more things to hate. So I'm going to try my best to give every aspect of this game a fair amount of time and acknowledge as much of the good things as I can while being equally as honest about its many, many mistakes. This is just Far Cry 5 all over again, or more accurately, Far Cry New Dawn again, which is actually worse. So since I like to talk about gameplay mechanics first, as every reviewer should, let's be honest, let's go into what's the same, what's different. If you played a Far Cry game, well, you already know what to expect, more or less. The basic controls are pretty much the same. It's a combination of decent first-person shooting, some stealth, machete takedowns, abusing silencers heavily, which thankfully have actually been nerfed in this game. That was one of the very few welcome changes. But before we get to that, let's talk about Far Cry 5 for a moment. One of the best critiques I've seen of Far Cry 5 was done by a YouTuber called Ren Reviews. And I would highly recommend watching that video. But to boil it down, his main complaint with Far Cry 5 was that the game is just too easy and dominant strategy, in that game's case being silenced snipers and silenced LMGs, that made it so the excuse of making your own fun or this crazy over-the-top shit didn't really matter because you're just going to use the most effective tactic every time. And so, I don't know if Ubisoft saw this video or just listened to a common complaint with overall Far Cry design, but now, suppressors actually overheat. So at the very least, it's kind of pointless to silence automatic weapons. Now notice how I said automatic. Because at the very beginning of the game, you're given an M14, and as part of the tutorial, 
you're given the shittiest suppressor and armor piercing rounds which is a new mechanic that is really dumb and terrible and adds nothing to the game but we'll get to that in a second and this m14 is good for the rest of the game it's pretty much the second gun you get and it's one of the best guns in the game simply because it's a one hit headshot on almost any enemy in the game now there's exceptions to this mainly due to the rpg mechanics that were taken from new dawn which are complete trash probably the worst aspect of the game but my point is this nerf to suppressors and silencers only slightly alters the dominant strategy in the game silent snipers are still the way to go and actually let's take a moment to talk about those stealth mechanics if you played any Far Cry game, you know that rudimentary stealth mechanics are a big part of the core gameplay. They've never been all that great, but they're there to give you gameplay variety, and they usually do a pretty good job of that. Granted, it got more and more repetitive as the games went on, because clearly Ubisoft didn't really know how to expand on the mechanics without making them actually difficult. So what did they decide to do for Far Cry 6? Well. They dumbed it down even further. Yes, really. You may remember, again if you played any of these previous games starting with 3, that typically enemies started off borderline deaf and had no peripheral vision. Right. So it was very easy to sneak up and get a takedown on them. However, as soon as they discovered a dead body or you missed a shot or you shot too low and didn't get the kill, all the enemies in the area would become alert and in this alert status they were very perceptive up to a certain range let's just say roughly 200 meters now of course the way to break this was to be outside of that sight range which is why silent snipers were so overpowered in those other far cry games but in this game they still go into alert status but not always actually in my stream, you can see where I was sniping an enemy outside of this usual alert range, and he didn't even alert his buddies, in fact, he went to go investigate by himself. I don't know if this was a fluke, but usually the AI isn't that dumb, but that is a shining moment of how idiotic it is. No, the main difference here is that the alert status has been nerfed. They don't actually seem to be any more alert at all. So I have many, many moments in my footage that I'm no doubt showing here, where I just crouch walk into a camp, one by one headshot each of them with my M14, and even though they're clearly finding their dead buddy's body, they can't see me despite me being like 50 feet in front of them. So stealth is completely brain dead in this game. It is so broken, man. This has gotta be the easiest game in the series to take over an outpost undetected. Stealth is actually faster than going in guns blazing, even if you shoot all of the alarms. The only improvement, and it is a very minor one, is that there are now cameras. And cameras can also detect bodies and sound the alarm. There's just one problem, and it's a big one. You can shoot cameras with no consequences. There are two other minor improvements to the stealth, but they don't matter that much. One, there's now social stealth, which just means you can holster your weapon, so as long as you're outside of a restricted area, enemies won't shoot you. That's definitely an improvement, even though honestly it didn't come up that much. It's so easy to just one-tap people's heads now that it didn't make much of a difference. The other improvement are the aforementioned suppressors that now overheat, the problem with this is that even the worst suppressors in the game can silence about five rapid fire shots before they overheat, which is why the M14 is so good, like I explained before. So yeah, somehow Far Cry 6 has managed to have the worst stealth in the series. So you might be thinking, is the shooting at least good? Well, it's pretty much Far Cry shooting, which means more horizontal recoil than you should probably ever put in your shooter. Except when you get the designated OP guns. In past games, this would be the signature weapons that you would unlock by doing a certain number of some kind of side mission or collectible. 
Everyone remembers the MG42 from Far Cry 4. The signature version of that was so ridiculously broken that you didn't need a grenade launcher anymore. The thing could shoot down helicopters with bullets because they were armor piercing and would go straight through to the pilot. And it killed everybody on the ground in one hit. Even the heavily armored guys, it could headshot them. Now there's nothing on that level of overpowered in this game though, the MG42 is back, it's a late game LMG. But the equivalent of the low recoil weapons would be just slapping a muzzle brake or compensator on your gun instead of a silencer. And yeah, they make a massive difference in recoil. LMGs go from borderline unusable to laser by putting on a compensator. But yeah, there's not really much else to say about the shooting. You can't really do anything creative with your movement. You can't shoot while sliding. You obviously can't shoot while using your wingsuit, but that would be fun. Even if that would make no sense, it would be better than nothing. But of course, the biggest downgrade to the shooting is the RPG mechanics, which we'll get into in a bit. But to keep it brief, the enemies have health bars, right? This was in New Dawn. And yeah, obviously it's very immersion breaking, like many other things in this game. And the fact that they have health bars, you can very obviously see how much more bullet spongy the enemies are, right? Now granted, there's actually two solutions to this problem, which we'll get into later. But it makes it so if you haven't customized your guns, the shooting is definitely less satisfying because enemies just eat bullets for breakfast. But other than that, there's not really much to say. If you've played a Far Cry game, it feels like Far Cry shooting. One of the big new character abilities that was advertised is the Supremo. And the Supremos are basically rocket barrage cannons that go on your back, right? And you build it up like a super meter, and then you use whatever that Supremo does. They have various different effects, not all of them are rockets. But it's essentially a get-out-of-jail-free card if one of these armored military helicopters show up that can take a shit ton of explosive rounds. It's kind of insane. And you can also fight tanks and get in tanks in this game, which actually, that's one of the biggest improvements. Riding around in a tank, I'll give you credit for that one, Ubisoft. That's like a plus one out of ten for me. And it actually gives you a high-tier enemy, which... I've always thought was a problem with some of these Far Cry games is that once you get to a certain level of power, there's nothing that's a threat to you. At least a tank is more deadly than anything we've really faced yet. So there's a little credit where it's due. But the other big part of these Supremos is that they determine what throwable items you can equip. You can hold four different throwable items and there's a larger variety of throwables than I think we've ever seen in a Far Cry game. You got standard stuff that you would expect. Like, the baseball is essentially the new rock. You got dynamite, you got grenades. You can set down trip mines. There's sticky EMP grenades. There's a nice variety of different throwables here. So, again, that's another small improvement. Also, like Far Cry 5, you can fly around helicopters and planes. And like I just mentioned, you can drive tanks. You can also ride on horses if you care about that for some reason. Another gameplay mechanic from Far Cry 5 is the buddy system. You'll all remember this gimmick. You have a buddy, you can give him basic commands, he'll kill some people with you, and at least they have a decent amount of health, so they usually won't go down too fast. The main change of Far Cry 6 is that all of the buddies are animals now. There are no human partners. I'm honestly okay with that. The only real problem is that it makes most of the buddies seem the same. Even though the buddies have their own linear skill tree, essentially, which you just level up by using them and doing whatever their special gimmick is. But functionally, almost all of them are the same. The only main differences are that a couple of them are more stealthy. Chorizo, the little crippled wiener dog, he can distract enemies. They pretty much all do the same thing, because they're just animals in Far Cry, which all do the same thing. So, I think it's finally time to talk about the elephant in the room, the RPG mechanics. The RPG mechanics were the worst part of Far Cry New Dawn, but on some level that game could get away with it because it was clearly supposed to be kind of a spin-off game. But the reason those mechanics were so bad is because the only thing that mattered was your weapon's rarity that determined how much damage you did to enemies, right? So if you were using a common gun, 
one of these like elite or legendary enemies would take like five or more headshots to kill. I don't think I need to explain why it's immersion breaking and just plain not fun to shoot somebody in the head with a sniper rifle and they're completely fine. And unfortunately that is back in this game. To a reduced extent though. And actually if you want to talk about lack of realism and destroyed immersion, have you seen these fucking quest screens? From the dirt. Do you, you see this? This is, oh my god, this is a single player game. Why does this look like a Destiny quest menu type of thing? It took me a little while to understand how the new rank mechanic works, which is essentially your level. But that's the backbone for all of these RPG mechanics. If you play this game and the enemies feel like bullet sponges, well, you're playing the game wrong. There is a way to fix this, even if it's dumb, and it really pigeonholes you into a very specific play style, but it is very manageable. Simply put, your level affects how much damage you do to enemies. If you're in an area that is a higher rank than you, then it's going to take multiple headshots to kill enemies. It sucks, but realistically, it's not going to come up very often unless you're the type of person who skips all of the side content in Ubisoft games, in which case, why are you playing Ubisoft games? Just play a linear single player game, they're much better than this, I promise you. After the 10 hour mark, there's pretty much a 0% chance, unless you're purposely going out of your way to go to a high level area, that you're going to have this problem. As long as you're properly leveled and using armor piercing rounds, that's very important, then a headshot will be a kill with almost any gun in the game. So, speaking of armor piercing rounds, this is a part of the new weapon attachment system, which actually is one of the few real improvements on the Far Cry formula. Its implementation isn't great, but I'm trying to compliment Ubisoft on any innovation they put in these games at this point, because my expectations for them are so low. But basically, ever since Far Cry 3, how attachments work is you have two attachment slots and you usually have about three options for attachments, which would be a silencer, extended mag, and some kind of sight. This is why the signature weapons from those older games were so good because they had every attachment and often they also had a damage boost to go with it. Now in this game, the situation is actually completely flipped where base guns are way better than the special variants because the special variants of guns have random attachments on them, normal attachments that you can put on your gun, which was definitely a mistake in my opinion because it definitely ruins a lot of the world loot that you find. But this also means there's a lot more attachments you can put on your guns with the only limitation being the amount of slots for that type of gun. So for an assault rifle, for example, you have a muzzle slot, which is where you would put a silencer or a compensator. You have an ammo slot, which you can choose between armor piercing and hollow point, which are the two best by far. The hollow points significantly increase the damage of your bullets, but they're less effective against armor. So what you'll notice is the further you get in the game, all the enemies will start wearing helmets, which obviously is what those armor piercing rounds are for but also there are enemy variants that wear degrees of armor. And there's even like a heavily armored PUBG looking dude that sadly you can still one hit kill with a headshot, but you can also use standard ammo, which you will never use. Poison bullets, which can make your enemies fight each other, which I thought is a pretty good idea, but they just don't do enough damage to really be useful. Incendiary rounds, which actually suck ass, Enemies can still shoot you while on fire in this game. I don't know why the fuck Ubisoft thought that was a good idea. And there's also explosive rounds, which are supposed to be good against vehicles, but you're better off just using a grenade launcher or rocket launcher or something. They really don't do that much damage. There's also a slot for your sights, whether you want reflex, red dot, some kind of scope, etc. And there's also a slot for laser sights. On top of this, there's also two mods that you can put on your guns. These are kind of minor upgrades, similar to something you would see in Call of Duty, like a faster reload time or a larger magazine. There's also some damage boosting ones in there that are definitely the best. 
The problem is, like I mentioned before, there's all these unique guns you can find in the world that you can't add attachments to, and those attachments are always worse than what you can make yourself. I think the only purpose of these guns is if you don't have enough crafting materials to make those attachments for your guns. Cause yeah, unfortunately, you need crafting materials to make attachments. But realistically, you're probably not going to use those unique guns. The only guns in this loot system that are actually interesting are the Resolver weapons, which are essentially the goofy weapons, I guess. And yeah, from the ones I've used, they did a pretty good job here. There's a Revolver shotgun with a metal shield. I used that one a lot. That was pretty fun. There's a Fireworks launcher, which, I mean, is essentially a rocket launcher if the rockets went in random directions. And the saw blade launcher is back. There's also a nail gun. And so, you know, some interesting stuff in there to add some variety. I wouldn't say most of them are more useful than, you know, say a rocket launcher in that slot. But yeah, I'd still say this is an improvement. So good job, Ubisoft. At least there's a couple things in this game that move the series forward. Well, it's time to talk about the other elephant in the room. I actually had to re-record this section because I was honestly a little bit too hostile, a little bit too negative, it wasn't really accurate. But yeah, it's time to talk about the clothing. This video ended up being insanely long, so I'm going to condense this part a little bit. But essentially, they completely got rid of leveling up. There are no skill points, there's no skill trees. Instead, we now have clothing that gives you various skills, up certain stats, makes you immune to certain things, and gives you back some of the old takedown abilities that you don't earn or start out with, like the handgun takedown and the grenade takedown. Now, for the first roughly 15 hours of the game, this system is terrible, because none of the low rank clothing have interesting effects. It's usually something like slightly more bullet resistance, you can tag enemies faster, animals won't attack you until you get closer to them, things like this that aren't interesting. But then later, when you start getting these clothing sets, some of them actually have really interesting abilities. Namely, the ones that increase your movement speed because all of them stack. With the full set, you end up sprinting about as fast as you could in Blood Dragon, which is actually pretty cool. There's a whole set that makes you stealthier in different ways, whether that's making enemies take longer to detect you, which already, it feels slower than past games, so I imagine with the full stealth suit, stealth is even more broken. There's the takedown related ones, like I mentioned. There's a piece of clothing that actually regenerates vehicle health while you're sitting in a vehicle. That one is completely broken when you're in a tank. It makes you invincible. And so yeah, while I started out actually completely hating this system, by the end of my 30 plus hours, I ended up kind of enjoying it. So I'm just going to write this off as a good idea that was somewhat poorly implemented. I still wish they hadn't gutted the skill system to add this, but all in all, it actually was a positive change for the series. And yeah, that pretty much covers the core gameplay mechanics. It still plays very similar to other Far Cry games. Just equip armor-piercing rounds in a silencer and click on people's heads. And you're going to be doing that for like 90% of the game. But you can't talk about a Ubisoft game without bringing up the various missions, the world, the side activities. Because you're going to be doing that a lot more than story missions, of course, because it is a sandbox game. Are they at least good for the standards of the genre? No. No, they're not. <laughs> this is sort of where the Just Cause comparisons are going to come into play, because it reminds me a lot like that. The number of outposts have been cut down to probably a third of the amount that have been in previous games. And instead of taking over outposts, now there's military targets. Which essentially means you go to a place and you blow up a thing. Just like the Just Cause games. The one you'll be engaging in the most, mainly out of necessity, are the anti-aircraft cannons, which are scattered all around the island. If you don't take these out, you can't fly anything in that area without getting shot down. Even if you're flying like five feet off the ground where an anti-aircraft cannon would never be able to hit you, yeah, they still take you out somehow. 
And luckily, objectives like this can be taken out in like five seconds if you know what you're doing. Because you can just use your Supremo to instantly blow up the cannon. With the military checkpoints, all you have to do is blow up the billboard. In the case of the ambush activities, just gotta kill everybody there. And if you get discovered, the local guerrillas will actually help you kill the enemies too. So there's a lot of these smaller activities that are faster. And I'd say that's an improvement but the quality of them is extremely low. Again, it's like Just Cause. But the reason it works for Just Cause is because the mechanics in Just Cause are much more fun. If you played any of those games, you know they have a heavy focus on physics, right? You can use steel tethers, balloons, miniature rockets, and just attach them to people or buildings or cars and just mess around with stuff, and it's really fun. This game doesn't have anything like that. So you're basically just going to a place, shooting the people, going to a new place, shooting the people, over and over and over again, without the interesting, unique level design of the outposts that kept them fresh in the older games. Sure, the few outposts that are here are good, like there's a film studio, there's an oil rig, and probably some other ones I can't really think of off the top of my head right now because there's so few of them. But again, you're not going to be doing that the majority of the time. The majority of the time you're going to be doing these shitty ass activities. The worst activity by far are the supply drops. Basically, supplies get dropped like a thousand meters away or more usually. And you're given three to five minutes to get there. And then you just kill four or five guys and you grab the resources. That's it. There are at least 30 of these spread across the map. And it is the exact same every single time. And it gives you so much time. Five minutes to cross 1300 meters? Why? Are they expecting you to go on foot? And there's no variation here. None. It's the exact same fucking thing. For resources. And let's just go ahead and talk about the resources, because that's the other sort of RPG mechanic thing that was in New Dawn. All throughout the map, you're collecting metal, plastic, gunpowder, etc., etc., to both build up these gorilla bases on each part of the island, and also to craft the various attachments for your guns. And resources are everywhere and plentiful, but of course you need a crap ton of them to craft things, so it balances out. Honestly, I hate it. All that it means is when you're done clearing a place out, you gotta run around this little encampment and spam E on everything till you've picked up all the gasoline and plastic and metal and blah blah blah, right? It adds nothing to the game. It makes it more repetitive and less fun, period. And you wanna know what the second worst activity is? They brought back timed races. Yes, I know this was in Far Cry 3. I don't care. Stop putting repetitive shitty content, even if it's easily skippable, in these games. Just stop. Then there's some other smaller miscellaneous crap. There's these guerrilla missions, I don't remember what they're called, but basically you send off a dude to go grab some resources with random recruits that you save across the map and it actually takes real time to complete these missions like a fucking mobile game and at the end you just get some money maybe some new recruits maybe a bit of gasoline or some other resource right and yeah they suck but at least they feel completely optional to try and mention something positive i will say they brought back the expeditions from new dawn which again if you played new dawn you'd remember that the expeditions were the best part of the game, bar none, because they were linear levels in mini sandboxes where you just did a simple objective, fought a bunch of people, you could do it in co-op, and of course you can play this game in co-op, I don't care. It's not gonna improve this game's rating with me whatsoever. But yeah, expeditions are back in six. Problem is, there's only two available at launch. So yeah, I had a pretty good time for roughly an hour, but then there was no reason to do them again, and honestly, the rewards weren't really worth it. I thought the two levels were pretty well designed, especially the first one, where you go to a dinosaur-themed zoo, but yeah, with only two available at launch, it's not much of an upside. It certainly won't sell you on this game. 
So to make things sound a little bit less abysmally terrible, <laughs> I realize I've focused mostly on negativity, so here's another upside. The best activity in the game is the treasure hunt, another carryover from 5. Most of the ones in 5 were sort of just minor puzzles, a slight distraction, not really that interesting. In this one, they focus a lot more on platforming challenges, but also there's a lot more unique locations. For example, there's one that's basically a haunted house, and yeah, I thought that was pretty fun. It was a nice distraction for 10 minutes. There's another one that's like Indiana Jones themed, where you steal this emerald and have to deal with this curse, quote unquote, right? Basically just a bunch of booby traps. And this is something I forgot to mention in the mechanics section, but they slightly expanded on the climbing mechanics to make it more interesting. Now there's a sort of first person uncharted type of thing where you can actually jump between ledges. And they combine this with grapple points from four and a bunch of zip lines. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was actually entertained by over half of the treasure hunts I went to. And yeah, so it's nice to see that occasionally the effort is put towards something that actually makes the game more fun. So are the story missions at least good? Not really. I think Ubisoft is just creatively bankrupt in this area as well because for many sandbox games, the story missions are the highlight. They're the good activity that you're working toward because they're usually higher quality, you'll get some nice cutscenes maybe. But honestly, the mission design here is just lazy. There's yet another burn the drugs mission. Yeah, this is at least the third time in this series, if not the fourth or fifth, that there's a mission around burning drugs. Are you kidding me? Come on. And honestly, there's actually multiple, but just specifically one where you're supposed to use a flamethrower shows up in the first three hours of the game. And then you're going to do it again with a biplane later. That one was a bit more fun because at least you got to drop bombs. But most of the mission design is just go to a place, kill all the people, grab the thing, move to the next place. There's a couple where you have to defend a point from waves of enemies. You know, we've done that all before. Honestly, most of it didn't really stick out to me. There was a mission where you have to carry a guy through a church while a tank is hunting after you, but it honestly wasn't handled that well. Certainly not as well as a game like Uncharted 2 that did the same exact thing much better. There's also multiple more missions where you are drugged. Yeah, they're still doing that in Far Cry 2 with hallucinations and weird fantasy shit though. It's a little toned down in this game, nowhere near the Shangri-La stuff in 4. I'm just so tired of it. I could go on and on about this aspect of the game, but it doesn't matter, you get the point. All it does is make me yearn to play Far Cry 2 again, where things were simple. You're given this big map, you're given very simple objectives, just go somewhere and kill the people there, maybe grab some diamonds or something. The whole appeal of that game was surviving in a hostile environment. Meanwhile, you have to deal with things like weapon jamming, your malaria, the guns themselves being inaccurate with the exception of the snipers. Even in Far Cry 2, the snipers are overpowered. And even though I hated the mechanic where outposts respawned all the enemies in them pretty much as soon as you left, that really sold the concept of a world where everyone is trying to kill you. That game had problems, I covered them in the video, so I'm not going to talk about it again. But I'd play it again any day before some modern fucking Ubisoft game where you have a million side objectives which they strongly encourage you to try out, and it's always the same repetitive trash that they sprinkled throughout the map. It is literally the reason I hate sandbox games is Ubisoft sandbox design. I'm not exaggerating. So I'm done with this section. I'm just gonna rant for like another 20 minutes about bad mechanics if I keep going. Let's just get to the story. That's the dream. Sure, Yankees might pay you to park their cars or pick their fruit, but you'll never be one of them. The American dream doesn't come in our color. Okay, if we're shitting on dreams, Jesus fucking Christ, you, you knew that was coming. Okay, since this video is probably already a century long, I'm going to only briefly cover aspects of the story, because honestly, who still cares about story in a Far Cry game? They fucking nuked the world at the end of 5, 
And now six has come along and uh, what happened? Uh, why are we not in a nuclear apocalypse? Why is America completely fine in the secret ending? Is Far Cry 5 even canon anymore? It must be at least slightly canon because the dog buddy from that game is in this game. But whatever, who cares? Like I said, I don't think Ubisoft cares. Why should we? So is the story at least any good? No, no, it's not. It's just an excuse to liberate the country and take down this fascist dictator. No, honestly, I don't even care. The details don't matter. Even though each region of the map, you meet some characters who have their own motivation, their own story. I couldn't be bothered to care about any of it. None of the characters are that interesting. But the biggest problem with this is I feel like Ubisoft has crossed a fucking line now. They are getting dangerously close to Naughty Dog levels of woke at this point. If you continue to live your life with your head in the sand, maybe you didn't notice some of this. Well, you better believe I did. First of all, the leader of Libtar, I mean, the Libertad. You hear that? Libertards? Is a woman. The canon version of Danny is a woman. The Monteros, likely the first group that you'll try to recruit to Libertad, ends up being led by a woman. The characters that you recruit in the swamp that are the voice and spirit of Yara, or whatever, are both women. Oh, I I'm sorry, uh, that's offensive. Uh, a woman and a trans man. Yes, there is a trans character in this game too, who's in a lesbian, or er, uh, straight relationship. Yes. Actually, there are multiple missions based around Paolo's transition. No, I'm not joking. They managed to shoehorn it into the missions, too. Not to mention his girlfriend is a raging and put a gun to a horse's head, so fuck you. I don't give a shit. The leader and second in command of La Morale, which are basically Zoomer communists, that are actually more extremist than the actual communists from the 67 revolution that is clearly very reminiscent of Cuba, if you didn't already think this was fake Cuba. They are more genocide happy than the old boomers that you meet. And ironically enough, El Tigre, the leader of the old communists, is probably the best character in the game. But no, these Zoomers are led by a woman, Yelena, and the second in command, Hon Ron, is also a woman. Seven major characters in this game are women. Seven out of probably ten. Are you fucking kidding me? You're telling me that a violent, borderline genocidal revolution that has no plan for the country other than a free election, free the people, at least they got that part true to life, is led by women. Bullshit. All of these women are shooting and killing people. It doesn't affect their psyche at all. They're all genocidal maniacs. Remember when Far Cry had nuance? Remember in Far Cry 3 when Jason Brody slowly became a sociopath and that was the focus of the story? Now look at Far Cry. We have actual teenagers, fucking Zoomers, who are shooting soldiers who no doubt have families and half of those soldiers are women don't think I didn't notice that too, Ubisoft. So they're completely fine with killing women and men with families. No remorse. Thousands are killed. I just find it funny that they choose this game of all games to sort of try and push their progressive agenda. I mean, this is the same game where a crippled wiener and a studded cock are two of your amigos. Okay, that was kind of a shitty joke, but I'm trying to bring some levity to this situation. And I already know what you're gonna say, you're not supposed to take it seriously. Then why the hell did they put a trans character in, and literally all of his motivation is based around his surgery and his debts that he has to pay for said surgery. And even says that after they win this revolution, his revolution is next, to fight for trans rights. Yeah, okay, I'm not supposed to take it seriously. What? Fuck you. Fuck anybody who's making excuses for this cringy bullshit being put into video games. And this is a joke 
from Ubisoft. Again, do I have to remind you what their executives did to women working for the company? Many people have covered this. Ubisoft doesn't give a fuck about women. This is virtue signaling, plain and simple. And anybody with half a functioning brain can see that. Again, I have nothing against trans people, nothing against women. I have everything against political propaganda being put into video games. That's all I'm gonna say because my channel is already in danger enough from a rant like this. To get back to the story for just a bit, after playing a lot more of the game, I will say the further you get into the game, the more compelling that Anton Castillo actually gets. Obviously they typecast Giancarlo, whatever his last name is, I don't remember. <laughs> You know, Gus from Breaking Bad. Everybody knows that, okay? But that being said, he's a great actor, and he did a great job in this game. And this is one of the few games I've seen in recent years where the facial capture technology doesn't look like shit, thankfully. And yeah, I honestly found myself rooting for the villain instead of the heroes, because the heroes have no plan for the country. Even though, obviously, this guy's pretty evil. He makes a weirdly compelling argument for his abuse of slavery. Is Viviro produced with slave labor? Truth or lies? The truth, of course. Yada did not write the playbook. Slavery was your first corporation, 1800 to 1860. Cotton was your number one export. Grown by whom? Just a second. Slaves. Four million Americans worth $3.5 billion. The number one asset in your economy was people who look like me. What is that called? A history lesson? A head start. But watching him turn his son into an extremist, and just how deadened he is to this because his father was killed by the communists, his wife is killed by these new communists, aka your character. So yeah, I can understand him, I can see how he became such a psycho. And at least he had a plan to turn Yara into a profitable country, even if it was through abuse of experimental drugs and all that, blah blah blah. So, he's probably the best villain since Voss, pretty much tied with Pagan Men in terms of his complexity. Probably a little better than Pagan Men because we're all sick of Troy Baker. At least I am, I don't know, I won't speak for you, but the worst part of Pagan Men was being voiced by Troy Baker. But yeah, I think that's the only thing of note really with the story, is him, of course. And the fact that we get to see him from a third person perspective instead of being constantly shoved into our face like all these other Far Cry villains where the villain just monologues to you. Yeah, fuck that. That's never fun or interesting. At least they did something different this time. So in conclusion, should you buy Far Cry 6? Fuck no. In fact, because of the woke shit, I'd say you shouldn't buy this game, period. And honestly, the fact that I pointed this out, I'm already probably gonna get a bunch of dislikes on this video, but honestly, I don't care. I'm never gonna stop. I'm always gonna point out this shit where I see it. I rented a month of Ubisoft Plus to play this game, so none of you have to. I wish I could get review copies for games like this so I could warn you, at launch, I don't think any AAA company is going to give me review copies if I ever get big enough for them to check out my reviews. I'm gonna basically shit on every AAA release in the past two years, so I can't blame them. Look, if you have to play a Far Cry game, at least play Far Cry 2 because you probably haven't played it, and it's a great game, and I'm sure you can get it cheap. Blood Dragon is still a great game, probably still my favorite Far Cry game. It's basically Far Cry 3, but twice as fast, has a better progression system, and it only has 10 hours of content, so you're probably not going to get bored unlike every other Ubisoft game. If you don't care about the political angle, if you want to ignore it, at least buy the game used or, uh, you know, sail the high seas or something. Don't support Ubisoft anymore. God, just don't do it. They're such a joke. They don't care about making quality games. They only care about making the bare minimum quality needed to sell a game to the normie masses. I would argue Far Cry 6 is the second worst in the series. Not as bad as New Dawn, which is definitely the worst, but it's probably slightly worse than Far Cry 5. Just don't bother, man. That's it. I don't need a long-winded conclusion. You saw the video. Don't buy the game.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Do the things the algorithm likes, if you haven't already. Thank you to all my patrons, I haven't said it in a while, but you guys make buying these AAA games a little less painful. So thanks for your support. I'm gonna have to blow a lot more money on these new game releases, so every little bit helps. Next review is gonna be Metroid Dread. I'm sure it'll be much better than this game, but even Nintendo these days is sort of declined in the quality department. So hopefully it's good, but yeah, that's about it. I'll see you next time, guys.